Welcome back to the FT Markets Bubble Series. Frontier markets have been borrowing record amounts through international capital markets in recent years as investor demand pushes costs down. But our country's taking on too much debt. With me to discuss this is Stuart Culverhouse of specialist broker Exotics. Stuart, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Let's have a look at our first chart and we can see that Frontier debt issuance has risen by a startling amount in 2013. And it's uh, so far this year, it's looking like it could be another record mm. year. What's changed in the last couple of years? I think what we've seen since the global financial crisis all those years ago is after a period of no issuance, things have settled down. In the last couple of years, we've seen a massive amount of issuance from the frontiers, from emerging markets at the mainstream and then gradually filtering down the credit spectrum as people seek yield and also, I think, get used to the risk um, characterizations of frontier markets. Maybe they're not as risky as people used to think. But is that is that actually true? Can we think of some examples of frontier countries that have issued recently and maybe are presenting quite a lot of risk? Well, we've seen, I think, three good examples recently of frontiers that have come back to the market. So you have a debut issue from Kenya um, last month, which issued $2 billion worth of bonds. Um, that's been They've been talking about it for several years, so finally we've seen that, and, and now that's trading at 6.2% in yield terms for the 10-year bond. So um, that's been a significant development, I think, in terms of Africa and Kenya. Um, we've also seen Ecuador come to the market the first time since 2005, and since then it's also defaulted. But that was able to return probably quicker than more people, many people expected, um, issuing a bond at 8%. And we've seen Ivory Coast also come back to the market. Um, it also went through a default uh, for different reasons to Ecuador. Um, it was really conflict driven, but that was able now to tap the markets last month and issue a bond um, at very finely priced at five and six, five and eights, I think. So these, these three examples are good because uh, you have Kenya, who was a, a maiden issue. Then you have two countries that were coming back after they were defaulting. Mm -hmm. Did the markets seem to uh, react to the fact that they defaulted in the past, or did it seem as though markets have a very short history and they just didn't care? I think you have a little bit of, I mean, if you default, then you can come back to the market. You're not closed forever. It's just a question of the appetite and, and maybe the fundamental reforms that you've seen since. And I think particularly the case with Ivory Coast, that was the case. Most people saw the default as an isolated situation. The new government has come in. They're growing at 10% a year almost. Debt is relatively low. So I think people would separate the default experience from maybe what the, the future looks much more promising. And therefore, a country like Cote d'Ivoire, I think, offers an interesting opportunity to get a bit of yield. Um, they priced it fi finally because the markets were quite ex exuberant at the time. Um, but also maybe a bit of diversification for a portfolio. So I think that, that matters for uh, Ivory Coast. Maybe Ecuador is a slightly different situation. But what we are seeing as we, as we have more frontier countries coming is that the average credit rating of countries is falling. So if we look mm -hmm. at our second chart, this looks just at sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at the debt credit rating and it's dropping quite significantly since the financial crisis. And uh, the reason for this is just more countries coming on with lower credit ratings. Is that right? I think it's the case because obviously a few years ago you would have had a couple of countries in the market um, debuting um, before the crisis and over time you know with the combination of factors that we've discussed more people are able to access the market and if they do that probably they need a credit rating because that would help investor relations but if you're in if you've already got countries that are fairly well rated and come into the market by extension the new ones are going to be less well rated so it's really a question of the you know the denominator is growing because you know it's the 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 higher risk countries coming to the market um, and that's happening but I think you've also seen maybe a reappraisal of some risk factors in some countries like Ghana for instance where you know, it's essentially homegrown imbalances are building and that's responsible for credit downgrades but I think the set is widening and that includes you know, weaker credits. But these government borrowing costs are startlingly lower than they were a few years ago aren't they? If we're saying that Kenya was able to borrow at rates around six or seven percent mm -hmm. that's that relates to what Europe was able to borrow uh, before the financial crisis. Does that reflect the risk fairly? Well, EM yields are, are very low now compared to where they were 10 years ago, for instance, and for investors that have been looking at this for a longer time, it's quite incredible. You know, we, we hit nominal all-time lows, I think, in January 2013 of 4.4%, which is incredibly low. Um, now nominal yields for across the EM are about 5.6, I think. So they've widened a little bit, but that's still quite um, a, a low yield when you think about the emerging market history. 
But I think people are thinking, well, growth prospects are still pretty good, particularly in the frontiers. They're not as highly indebted as developed countries. Um, so public debt is probably only about 45% of GDP in some of the frontier markets. So I think you, people are getting comfortable with the risk characterizations and yeah, yields are coming in. But if you look to the historical context, the yields look very tight now, certainly even though they widened. But if you look on a relative basis, then 6 7% yield is still relatively attractive compared to other asset classes. Stuart, thank you very much. So frontier country borrowing costs are at historic lows, but their overall levels of debt aren't as high as you'd think.